Hello and welcome to the Hawkridge Systems video series for SolidWorks Composer. This series is the top five things you need to know about Composer. Number one is going to be the Author and Transform tab. So once you have Composer loaded, you have your models loaded, up here at the top we have an Author tab and we have a Transform tab. If you go through all the tools in these two tabs, you'll know everything you need to know in order to get started with the application. Be able to move things around, add 2D elements, and actually start creating step-by-step -step instructions. This combined with the other four videos in this series, you can really get on your way to creating some pretty cool stuff. Okay, so we go to the author tab, and we have some options here. If you, I would suggest learning the application, or while you learn the application, to go through and just kind of take a look at what each one of these do. So for instance, grid, click on that, down here at the bottom, you can see it says pick an actor, and you can see live feedback of that grid. Basically, by placing a grid like this, you have now a grid space where you can go through and snap polylines to it. just gives you something to reference, basically. Go ahead and undo that, and we got... Let's go ahead and... There we go. And then we got a magnetic line. A uh, magnetic line is, is a really good one. Let me go ahead and place one and then show you exactly what it does. So I just want to place this magnetic line. With no other 2D actors on screen, it really doesn't do anything. But if I go over and I say like label and I start taking some annotations and placing annotations onto parts, I can then take this magnetic line and actually snap it to these labels. Just like that, I can easily organize how my labels are presented. You look, it's kind of like they're crisscrossed and whatnot. You just kind of drag them and place them. And you can place them exactly how you want on that line. I like to snap them to the center or something like, like that, just to get them nice and clean. All right, then also, I place that label. You can see that these labels are calling out attributes of the model they're attached to. If you're looking in the properties and you see something like this where you can't edit anything, it means that your label is attached to a style. To, un to de detach it from the style, you go up here to the Styles tab, you just say Unsubscribe, go back to Author. Just a real quick way to um, make this editable so you can do whatever you want to it. Now that we can edit it, I can actually go here in the text string, I can have this call out different metadata of the component here from SolidWorks. And that's just going to be any custom property that's in SolidWorks. We can go ahead and reference here in the text. Or we can go ahead and make that a string and simply um, type in whatever we want. So right here I can go like test or, you know, just to type in whatever we want into that string, reattach it to the, to the magnetic line there, and we are good to go. All right, if I want to save that, I just simply go over here and say new view, and I can go ahead and record uh, the changes that I've made. All right, going through the author tab here, the other tools that are of real, uh, I guess, hot items are these arrows and circle views. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a circle view, and then I'm going to jump into the transform tab in the back here for the arrow. So if I go circle, I can go ahead and like highlight that, maybe change the, the color and the opacity of the circle, and just give the user an idea that something here is going to happen. So the whole point of Composer is to eliminate that text, eliminate that language translation, show it visually, show it on screen so people know exactly what's going on. So obviously there's something going on with this tire. Got the circle on there. Now I'm going to go to the Transform tab. Go ahead and grab a couple items here. Now in the Transform, these three tools, um, I should say these two tools, Translate and Rotate, you're going to be using the most. Translate, you can simply take items, translate it out. Notice how that circle moves with it, because I've actually attached that circle to the tire. I don't have the circle attached, it's just moving with it. I go ahead and select the inner rim, I take that, drag it out, and look at that, it's actually attached to the rim. And that was just where I first clicked when I placed that circle, it's how it chose where to attach it. I'm going to create a new view for that, just like that. Alright, so in the Transform tab, we also have uh, Linear, Spherical, and Cylindrical Automated Exploded Tools. I like this spherical. You can take that, select all your items, take this little circle, and just kind of blow it out. So this is basically like putting a grenade in the middle of your model and, uh, and creating a real quick, just exploded view of it. It's pretty nice to be able to explode it out and just take a look at different components in there. And it's fun, too. Step back to my view to kind of bring everything back how it was. And um, let's go ahead and show the Align tool. So again, in Transform Align, 
these are like mates in SOLIDWORKS, but they're like temporary mates where they don't apply a permanent attachment. They're for relocating components, and uh, and then later on um, you can still move them. So for instance if, instance, if I do like a plane to plane, I can go ahead and say the plane on this part, I want to attach to the plane on this part or on this part or something like that. And I can go ahead and I can reference that plane for attachment. Now, um, if I wanted this part to move to the same location or as this part moved, this is where the copy transformation and copy location come from, come into play. So if I say copy location, I click on that guy, it's going to copy the same location as that part. If I say copy transformation, however way this part moved, this part will move as well. That way you don't get that spin on the component. So we can go ahead and do the copy transformation, maybe drag it back, do something like that. Just these real quick tools built right into Composer to help make your life a lot easier. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back to the Author tab. And then in here, I want to put an arrow. So Author, Arrow. And if I hold down Alt, I can attach to cylindrical faces of the arrows. So I can do something like that. I'm sorry, cylindrical faces of the parts with the arrow. Change the arrow, maybe make it green as well, and do something like that. You can see how the arrow, you can always see it through the components. That's just a property of the arrow. That's the stay on top right there. Uncheck that, and now I've got a two-dimensional arrow in 3D space. And you'll see that the only thing I've used this entire video here so far is the auth elements in the author tab, elements in the transform tab, and then I went ahead in the view and, and create the view. So that's just to save my spot, really. Okay, so let's go ahead and do just a couple more things, and then we'll wrap up this video and go on to the second one here. Uh, I do want to call out uh, our, our image 2D. So if I do image 2D, I can, I can select and I create a box. So this is just a placement, kind of a placeholder for this image. In the properties of this image, we can see that it's uh, in the properties of the image. Go ahead and scale down, scroll down here. We can see texture, map path, three dots right there. And I can navigate to locations. I'm just going to jump into my desktop here. And I have a screwdriver there. Pull screwdriver in. Automatically comes in skewed because that's the the placeholder I gave for it to fix that you just click on the uh, click and drag the bottom corner hold down shift and it'll automatically resize a re, uh, uh, ratio to the image there create a new view and I got a screwdriver so that the real nice thing about creating an image or allowing to bring images in, into composer is that if you have anything you don't actually model you can just take a picture of it bring it in and use it if I want to do a screwdriver I can go ahead and do like an attachment Let's do an attachment to, I don't know, maybe this component right here. And, uh, you know, this should be a lot fatter, maybe bright red so we can see it, something like that. So we be like, hey, you're going to use this screwdriver and you're going to screw this part here. So real easy ways to visually show what you're trying to convey. Okay, uh, one more thing in the transform tab, and this is where you're going to control how your components are going to move. So the align pivot and set pivot, these two tools are very important to learn. That's why I put it in the top five here. So align pivot, you can see that there's some options here. So given point, local axis, world axis. A given point is anywhere you click on the model. A local axis is the model itself, and the world axis is the entire assembly. So if I were to say, that this component here, we can see currently, if I try to um, translate it, it's not actually, it's translating along the X pretty well, but the Y and the Z are kind of, um, I'm sorry, it's trying to let, translating along the Z well, but the X and the Y are kind of goofy. They're, they're going at it some arbitrary angle. If I set a line pivot with world axis, I can make that, set that to how I, how I would expect. And the reason why it was skewed before, because it was based off the part, now it's based off the entire assembly. If I go line pivot with local axis, that's the part, and that's the current part's origin. If I go uh, with given point, I can go ahead and just choose any point that I want. You can kind of see that live feedback on the screen there. Um, and I can go ahead and place that. The set pivot, now this is another important one because this is going to control how an item rotates. If I just leave it by default, you can see if I go rotate this item, rotate tool, hold down alt, select the edge of that component, I can spin it. Now it spins like you would think. If I say set pivot and I say like on point and I set the pivot point there, then I go to rotate the sucker. Um, it's going to rotate along that point there place. And you also see that 2D arrow is, is actually following it, which is super nice that that remains that it 
keeps that attachment anywhere it goes. Okay, so that is the author and transform tab in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please move on to the second video of this series, and I think uh, once you're done with the five, uh, you'll get a pretty good feel on how to get started with Composer.